Well, you're most welcome to today's talk, Friday the 26th of August. Now, we're going to be looking at the changing symptoms that we're seeing in COVID-19 at the moment, and also the changes in long COVID. Changes partly because of the change in variant, but also because of the developing immunity. So let's just jump straight into that with some uh, Zoe data here from Tim Spector. Now, we're very much on the BA5 wave at the moment. We certainly know that BA5 is by far the predominant variant just now. And uh, early data from Tim Spector's team is saying that the Omicron BA5 is less likely to affect the brain. And as we'll see in a minute, the sort of neurological presentation of long COVID is the most common just now. So hopefully with the Omicron, we're seeing early signs that there's um, less long COVID going to be developing. Now, Tim Spector says that the R value is one at the moment. Um, I think he's being probably slightly pessimistic there. I, I agree it's probably greater than 0.9, but maybe not quite as high as one. Because if we look at his own data here, uh, we can see that the, the uh, decline is leveling off, but it's still going down. So I'm still expecting to see some reduction which means that the R value is probably uh, roughly uh, 0.9 at the moment. But uh, you can uh, take whose opinion you want on that. But as far as I can see, it's still going down slightly. And as we noted yesterday, the United States is just a little bit behind what's happening in the United Kingdom. Now, the new daily cases are still high. The, the, it, we are in an endemic situation, of course. There's a lot of, there's a lot of cases around. Um, so new daily cases, still 100,000. Current prevalence, 1.6. And this is symptomatic infection. So there's actually probably about 2 million people with SARS coronavirus 2 infection in the UK today. It's still very prevalent, but so thankfully it's, it's getting much, much less serious, which is why we're going on to endemicity and why I'm pleased that we're going back to um, living with covid for example, we noticed that UK hospitals are not going to be testing asymptomatic admissions for, for COVID as from next week, which I think is a good idea. What, why, why do we need to know if it's a mild, if it's going to be mild for, for most people? I mean, the answer to that is for some people it can be more severe, but it, it is a very small minority and that minority is getting smaller from the data that we have, which is good. Infections less likely to cause um, symptoms. Now, this is the amount of symptoms presented. So as from early July up until now, which is late August, so we're talking about uh, July, August here. Fewer symptoms and milder presentation. And part of this is BA5 may have a lower viral load or people have got more immunity so they're able to lower their own viral load more quickly. And this is why there seems to be an increasing proportion of, uh, we, we call them the, the lateral flow tests in the UK, some people call them the rapid antigen tests. Um, but there's more of these tests coming back negative, probably indicating that the infections that many people have are associated with a lower viral load. And I actually suspect this is more due to developing immunity more so than the nature of BA5 itself. So it's all, it's all pretty good news, really. Uh, lateral flow is less likely positive. Now, here's the change in the symptoms that the, uh, the, uh, the Zoe team have identified. Uh, again, as we say, basically in the last few weeks. So cough, um, no phlegm, about 5% less people getting that. So that's the reduction of about 5% in that one. Fatigue, well, that's about 5.5%. Uh, dizzy, lightheadedness, less people getting that. Loss of smell, less people getting that with BA5. Chest pain and tightness, less people getting that. Shortness of breath, less people getting that. And of course, shortness of breath is a really important one because that's one of the most important, well, the, one of the main reasons that people are being admitted to hospital. So another reason why hospitalizations are going down. Um, Alter, altered sense of smell, again, going down, down by about, what, 15%. So shortness of breath there, um, probably about just over 12% of people less, 12% less reports of that, which is good. Now, it, it, to just to balance the picture a bit, the Office for National Statistics have actually noticed that a few symptoms have increased since June over the last three months. So they think there's more abdominal pain, fever, sore throat and muscle ache according to the ONS data. So um, are we seeing a general 
reduction in the number of symptoms with milder symptoms yes we are but within that reduced amount are we seeing a change in symptom profile yes we are not surprising because of the BA5 variant and the developing immunity mostly due to the developing immunity I believe uh, June 2022 um, asymptomatic this is Office of National Statistics data 61% reported any symptoms in other words 39% were uh, asymptomatics while still testing positive and the Office for National Statistics is using the uh, the, the PCR tests uh, to see if people are positive or not so this is fairly uh, fairly convincing data so good chunk about 40% nearly are asymptomatic now um, moving on to long COVID briefly um, we have looked at this before but there's three distinct types of long COVID uh, identified now um, clusters of neurological symptoms, so things that are coming from the central nervous system, basically, so fatigue, brain fog, headache. Now, these were most commonly after the alpha, most common after the alpha and delta variant. So people presenting with neurological type long COVID mostly had alpha and delta type uh, virus. Um, second most common are respiratory symptoms, chest pain, shortness of breath could point to lung damage um, the longer that these go on for the more likelihood it is this tissue damage now this was the largest cluster at the start of the pandemic now at the start of the pandemic of course this was the original Wuhan uh, virus um, so is it that the Wuhan virus is more likely to cause the uh, respiratory long COVID or is it the fact that people weren't vaccinated uh, in the early part of the pandemic I don't think we can differentiate from that from the data that we have, but an interesting question. Um, and uh, diverse range of symptoms is the third group. So the third group is kind of everything else. <laughs> um, heart palpitations, muscle aches and pains, changes in skin and hair. Long COVID cases in Omicron, no firm data, but we do know it's less likely to occur, 20 to 50% less likely to occur. And the Omicron variant, this is, this is Claire Steves, who's uh, done a lot of the research on, um, on this. The Omicron variant appears to be substantially less likely to cause long COVID than previous variants. Good news. But still, 1 in 25 who catch COVID go on to have symptoms for more than four weeks. Now, this isn't surprising. Viral infections can give you symptoms for more than four weeks. It's the one that lasts for longer that we're more concerning. Now, we do have the latest uh, symptom list from um, the, the uh, COVID symptom tracker data here. Uh, this, is, this is current. Uh, and, of course, BA5. Now, with BA5 at the moment, we don't, we don't know for sure, but I suspect we're dealing with a 90% plus of cases of BA5 in the UK at the moment. In the, U in the United States, we know it's about 88 89% because their now casting is more up to date than the UK. Uh, but UK data at the moment, sore throat, 63% get a sore throat. Now, this is 63% of people that become symptomatic. It's not 63% of cases because we know that 39% of cases were asymptomatic. And now it's probably getting nearer, well, over 40%. I think we can safely say that our patients are asymptomatic um, because we're getting more asymptomatic cases as time goes on. So of those that develop symptoms, 63% get a sore throat, 51% get a headache, block nose 48, cough with no phlegm 46, runny nose 45%, cough with phlegm, in other words what we call a productive cough where you're actually coughing something up 44%, hoarse voice 44, sneezing 39, then fatigue, muscle pains, dizziness, altered smell, swollen neck glands, the lymph adenopathy, sore eyes, chest pain and tightness 14 fever down to 13 percent loss of smell down to 13 percent shortness of breath as we've said nicely down to 12 percent earache and hot flushes and uh, that is the whole list of current symptoms uh, and of course i'll put all of those in the uh, <laughs> all of that list i'll put them all in the uh, description so you can see them uh, in, in more detail now just to finish looking at long covid from the office for national statistics um, data slightly well oh, no it's not different it's, ju it's just um, it's cumulative it adds together quite nicely to give us a fuller picture at the moment 
1.8 million people in the UK reporting to have long COVID at the moment. That's the prevalence. 2.8% of the population. Pretty high, of course. Now, the good thing about it is it's going down slightly, but not a lot. Remember, this is self-reported long COVID. This is not based on any definitive medical diagnosis, something you can, nothing you can hang your hat on. It's self-reported. And here we see that the... So th this is um, the, the, uh, the prevalence here. And we see it's kind of... So what is that? that that's, uh, that's the 4th of the 4th, uh, 2021 there. Uh, so that's from uh, April 2021, more up to more up to date data. And we see that the amount of long COVID went up quite consistently. But now we do see that self-reported long COVID is starting to go down. And from the data we have about Omicron, I think we can expect that to go down further. But there is nuance to um, the long COVID. Let's just look at that as well. Of the 1.8 million people reporting long COVID, 81% symptoms last for at least 12 weeks, 43% at last a year, and now as time going on, 21% last for two years. Now, the longer people have long COVID, the more I'm concerned that it, some of the cases, and I think it's going to be a big minority, but some of them are caused by tissue damage, which may not recover fully may not recover fully um, if there's actual damage to the architecture of the lungs or damage to the myocardium of the heart unfortunately that's not going to fully uh, regenerate so there could be some long-term consequences of long covid indefinitely basically into the future uh, symptoms adversely affected the day-to-day -day activity in 1.3 million people so 1.3 million people at the moment saying they are not able to carry on with their normal day-to-day um, -day activities, or at least the long COVID is, is, is um, um, affecting their day-to-day -day activities. Now, long COVID symptoms, fatigue, shortness of breath, loss of smell, muscle ache, are the ones that most people are complaining of. So that would be in the neurological type, wouldn't it? Whereas the shortness of breath is more in the respiratory type. The loss of smells more in the in the neurological type, whereas the muscle ache is kind of in the last section where it's sort of everything else is included. Now, self-reported long COVID is more common in. Now, this is quite interesting. Uh, 35 to 69 year olds. OK, so it's not the old, it's not the young. Well, I suppose 69 is quite old, but it's not the very old and the very young. More common in females, more common in more deprived areas. More common in people working in social care. Now, that one's a bit of a mystery. Um, and more common in people with other uh, self-limiting uh, conditions. Um, other people with health-limiting conditions or disabilities. Now, this is the last bit here. Now, this last bit here, the Office of National Statistics, wrap this up in, in a double negative. So you've got all of this information in the Office for National Statistics, which is really easy to understand. It really is superbly communicated. And then you've got this bit about who's more or less likely to get it in double negatives. And it took me ages to, to work out what it means. So why would they want to communicate so clearly for most of it and then so communicate so badly when they're communicating this? So I've decoded what they've said. So... Um, Self-reported long COVID uh, is less common. So there's less self-reported long COVID in uh, active students, people that are retired, and people looking for paid work. Now, <laughs> students, of course, want to get their qualifications. The retired get the pension anyway, hopefully. Uh, people looking for paid work need the money, so they're looking for work. So long COVID's less common in these people. And of course, these are the people that, if you like, can't afford to have long COVID. So firstly, why did the Office for National Statistics wrap this up? I think, I think the Office for National Statistics are reluctant to say that some people are probably using long COVID as an excuse to avoid 
normal duties. Now, I am not taking anything away from the huge number of people that are seriously suffering, seriously suffering with long COVID. But here, the Office of National Statistics seem to be implying that there are some, and they don't give a figure, but there are some who um, perhaps could be uh, could be carrying out more normal duties than they are. So um, that's what they seem to be saying there. P please don't think I I'm demeaning people that are genuinely ill. They're not. We've, we've interviewed them on this channel. Some people are genuinely suffering. Uh, but it seems that other people uh, maybe aren't suffering as much as they are intimating. So there we are, change in symptoms, overall reduction in severity, long COVID, w w whether it's genuine or not, the genuine cases are enough to cause significant morbidity for some time to come. Worry that some of these are going to go on for long periods of time now. So that's where we are at. Um, Basically, people are getting less severe COVID, less symptoms, less severe symptoms. That's the general trend as immunity progresses. And I'm, I'm still watching this closely, but so far BA5 hasn't been replaced. That is, there's no variant seems to be coming on to uh, replace BA5 as BA5, replace BA4, and is that replace BA2, and is that replace, replace BA1? Omicrons and is that replaced Delta and is Delta replaced Alpha and is Alpha replaced the original Wuhan strain. So I'm still quite optimistic that things are going to be pretty good this winter and cases are going to go down. So um, I'll just leave you with the best uh, one of the best photos uh, sent in so far into this channel. This one goes way back to 2020 but it's such a good one I think I'll show it. So uh, someone saw a similarity between one of my mannerisms, and uh, that's Wallace, isn't it? Grummet's the dog. <laughs> so uh, that, that, that one's, uh, that's pretty witty. So that's good to finish on. And uh, on that optimistic note, uh, thank you for watching.